So the leaks and rumors were true. It looks like Halo is going to be switching to Unreal because one of the most credible sources on the internet for gaming news, Jason Schreier here, said that Microsoft's 343 Industries will still make Halo games, which I would assume so, despite rumors of the contrary, but it has mass layoffs with at least 95 people laid off, an engine pivot to Unreal, and a focus on multiplayer for the near future. 343 is hitting the reset button. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a small US-based company that provides a far more tasty, fulfilling, and more importantly, healthier option than your typical ramen brands. In less than three minutes, one packet of Vite Ramen gives you more food than the leading ramen brands, 25% of your daily micronutrients, up to 30 grams of protein, 7 grams of dietary fiber, and most importantly to me, 50% less sodium to help you live a healthier lifestyle. Where the leading brand is really just salt and carbs. Vite Ramen also has vegan plant-based versions as well. My favorite is the Sichuan Chili, as it actually packs a punch of heat along with a filling bowl of ramen. I mean, look at me, isn't that the face of satisfaction right there and why give your money to the corporate overlords we can help out a small business so check out the link in the pinned comment and also in the description of this video to give Vite Ramen a look over and thank you very much Vite Ramen for sponsoring this video this is such a big yikes when it comes to Halo just in general laying off at least 95 people which would equate to about a quarter of 343's workforce gone overnight, which is a huge hit. This is also reported similar to what we've heard from IGN talked about a similar ratio of people being let go. Uh, we've heard as low as 60, as high as like 120. So, so 100 sounds about right. But yeah, the big rumor of switching to Unreal, which looks to be actually happening. Of course, we covered this on the channel months ago when it first broke, mainly from Sean W and Jez Corden, sharing stories about what they've been hearing. And a lot of people flamed Sean W. Like, I think it was a turning point in his career on YouTube being like, you know what? Screw you guys. I know what I'm talking about, but you guys hate it when I try giving you the real news. And so he's kind of, now he's trying to go off and do his own thing right now. But guys, like, I would not expect Sean to be making things up. And Jason Schreier now saying that same thing about switching to Unreal sounds about right. I'm assuming what was probably going on is that internally 343 was going back and forth between using Unreal or sticking with Slip Space Engine. And it sounds like a decision has been made internally about what the future of Halo is going to be. So now you're probably asking, what about Halo Infinite? Does that mean Halo Infinite is going to Unreal Engine? I don't ever see that happening. To switch one game over to a completely new engine would be a massive undertaking that would probably take like at least a year, two, three, I don't know, I'm not an engineer, but I know it would be, wouldn't it be fast. And with the Halo franchise moving to Unreal, which would be a much more familiar engine for a lot of contracted developers, which Jason Schreier, again, talks about this is probably the biggest reason why to switch into Unreal. Saying 343's biggest core problem over the last few years has been a heavy reliance on contractors that can only stay for a maximum of 18 months. This isn't just 343 or Xbox, this is Microsoft as a whole. I know this from personal experience. <laughs> During this mass layoff, full-time employees got severance packages while contractors had to pack up and leave. Sounds been accurate from my experience of being a contractor over at Microsoft. So uh, this sounds pretty dang legit. So the reason why they'd want to switch to Unreal is one, if you're gonna have to still rely on contractors because there's a hiring freeze at Microsoft, they're definitely not hiring new people with 10,000 people just being laid off. And so you need to bring in a lot of contract work and Unreal Engine is kind of like the industry standard when it comes to engine development. Now, you might actually lose some of that uniqueness that Halo has when it comes to utilizing the Slip Space Engine, formerly the Blam Engine. Though you'll be able to create content a lot faster utilizing the Unreal Engine compared to Slip Space because Slip Space is proprietary. It has its own unique quirks and ways to go about doing things. At least this is what reports have been saying about Slip Space. Again, I'm not an engineer. I don't know how difficult that stuff is. But I know that Unreal is pretty much like the industry standard, like every developer that wants to get involved with games knows how to use Unreal. If you have to rely on contract work, you need to plug people in and have them just working right away because we need a new bit of Halo content as soon as possible. Going to Unreal might be that option. But Kevin, you said it's not gonna affect Halo Infinite, but you're switching to Unreal. What do you mean by that? What I mean is that I don't see Halo Infinite lasting very long. I've been saying this in previous videos. I think all signs are pointing towards June of 2024 
being the last full date of content we could possibly see for this game, I would be absolutely shocked if Halo Infinite continues on with the 10 year plan. Now with hindsight being 2020, when 343 made that statement that they're looking to do a 10 year plan with Halo Infinite, yeah, that's a bit early of a guess to say when it comes to the development of the game, because I think just now we're just starting to get to part of Halo Infinite's development where we can't actually continue on with seasonality, but it's taken so long, been so difficult, so short staffed, with so many people in leadership positions leaving, I think it's just gonna be cut your losses and move on to a new project. Thanks to the screenshot here from Rebs Gaming, which is from that Bloomberg article that Jason Schreier wrote, saying at several points over the past decade, management at 343 debated switching to Epic's popular Unreal Engine. But it wasn't until last year when previous studio head Bonnie Ross and engine lead David Berger departed and Pierre Heinz took over that the firm finally decided to pivot to Unreal. This switch will start with a new game code named Tatanka, which that's the first time I've heard referred to as a new game, according to people familiar with the plans. That project, which 343 is developing alongside Austin based Certain Infinity, started off as a battle royale but may evolve in different directions. Future games in the series will also explore using the Unreal Engine, which may make development easier. Although internal skeptics are worried that the Switch may negatively impact the way Halo gameplay feels, which that would certainly be my biggest concern since Slipspace Engine is built off of the old Bungie Blam engine. It's not a completely new thing from the ground up. They worked down to the basement and they apparently were trying to rework the engine to be a better workflow, but Clearly that didn't happen. Now, recent leaks and rumors that we've been hearing about the current state of Slipspace that things are actually looking up and getting better. I mean, that's why 343 said they're starting to get towards seasonality with season three. Sean Barron, who's the head of the live service of Halo Infinite, did sound very confident saying that the end of long-term seasons is gonna be happening with the release of season three. We're gonna get proper seasonal content. An interesting thing they mentioned about saying how the Tonka, which we've been talking about for the past year now, where it originally got leaked out by Jazz Corden, that it was going to be a battle royale. But it seems like things have kind of evolved and changed a bit with that. It's not gonna be like Warzone or Apex or Fortnite. It sounds like it's gonna have those elements, but a little different, like a bit of a twist on the battle royale thing, which could be good because I don't know if there's really much room for another battle royale. But I will say that Halo would make a pretty awesome awesome one. This section of Jason Schreier's article talks about campaign DLC and how it basically it was in such early development that it was even worth scrapping, saying that developers were making prototypes in the Unreal Engine and pitching the ideas for a new Halo game rather than working on new missions for Halo Infinite, but many of those developers were laid off. So this kind of confirms what we heard earlier that yeah, the uh, story content for Halo Infinite isn't happening. And if there's no story content coming in for Halo Infinite, which one is a total shame because Halo Infinite's campaign was amazing, that it just seems like they're gonna be cutting their losses with this game and moving forward to another game, which, ah, man, if I had to really try to predict like the absolute earliest we could get a new Halo game, well, traditionally they take about three years between titles. And since they're gonna be starting from the ground up to create a new game, that I could imagine this at the earliest being 2026, we get a new Halo game with new campaign, which that really hurts to say. But is it okay if I leave you guys with some hopium in this video? May it's been pretty doomer this whole time, but I think we have something cool happening next week within Halo Infinite. And that's some more customization. Remember that whole thing that Sean Barron mentioned about having extra reach content coming in within an event? Well, that event just got leaked out. Bathrobe Spartan recently leaked out this image of the Noble Intention event that's happening on February 7th and running until the 21st where you're getting some cool bits of armor right here. You can see within the event pass, a couple of new coatings and things like that. We'll see if we get some new game modes. I really hope so because reusing Covert One Flag Ain't it cheap? It looks like we'll have some lore accurate characters involved with this event. Some capacity saying about Rosenda, if I pronounced that correctly, as well as Tom, which interesting thing about Tom, he was that Spartan in the Halo Reach campaign trailer where he grabs the bomb, goes up to the Covenant Corvette and blows it up. And that's actually the Spartan that Noble Six replaces, which the whole time I thought it actually was Noble Six, but turns out it was just Tom. So we'll see if there's any type of lore or anything at all tied to this. Fingers crossed, but I'm not having huge hopes on this. I think it might just be a reuse of some mode that we haven't been in the rotation for a while and you get some new customization. Crossing my fingers for more agnostic challenges because last time having to play only Covert One Flag to get these unlocks was a bit of a pain.